G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'll be running through how I knock together this little radial flow settler behind me here and I'll also be sharing some technical tips to help you folks knock together a little settler for yourself. So if you want to know more about radial flow settlers and how they work and the mechanics behind it, check out this clip up here. It's a recent one I've posted to the channel. Uh, so suss that out and then you can come back here and check out how this little jobby here was knocked together. So quite obviously this is our little radial flow settler. Now it is made out of a recycled 200 litre drum and I've done something funky with the top there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, suitable drums for little filters like this, the recycled ones, can be anything that's made out of a food grade plastic and preferably have had food stuffs or food safe products in it before you buy them. Now you can get drums with lids, but I find that most of those guys have a taper down towards the base which can make it really hard to install the drain fittings. Uh, I do like these ones here because they tend to have a flatter wall which makes installing those fittings down the base a lot easier. Not only that, they're very easy to come by. You can find these pretty much all anywhere. And as you'll see in a minute, it's very easy to chop the top off and use it as a very sturdy lid. And the reason why we can do that is you might be able to see from here or probably better still from this photo that they have a narrowing just below the rim area. And that narrowing is round about the same diameter as the little gutter that runs around the circumference of the top of the drum. So when we chop it off at the narrowest point there, just below the lid, when we flip it over, that gutter creates a perfect little seal for the lid itself and it holds on there nice and firm. So before we look at how I installed the stilling wheel, I just run through a couple of technical points. Now, it's a good idea to have your stilling well come down at least half the total volume of water within the uh, vessel itself. You don't want it coming down all the way to the bottom because as the water leads around the edge of that stilling well, it will disturb some of those solids on the bottom. So I think a good rule of thumb to follow is around about 50% and that will give a fairly large body of still water down the bottom to slow the other water down, the velocity of that water down coming out from the stilling well so those particulate can fall on the bottom. I pretty much well just marked on the side of the barrel uh, where I thought the stilling well should be and then cut it to length. Now for the stilling well itself, I decided to go with a 150 millimeter or roughly six inch stormwater pipe and I'm just using one of the stormwater caps um, as the lid for it here. Now, I could have gone with a bucket like this, a tall 20 litre bucket. I think they're around about five gallons-ish. The only problem is I would have had to do a few modifications, uh, chopping into these little bits of the raised mold and that sort of thing. And not only that, because of this extra rim at the top, it probably would have only sat round about there and I would have lost a little bit of depth, probably around about three inches or 75 millimeters, I think. So the 150 mil pipe I had on hand from a previous um, build I had, and so I figured I might as well use that. Just had to spring, spring for the lid. Um, the lid, by the way, as you can see, has been modified. I've cut some sections out. That just makes it a lot easier to take on and off. Now to cut the hole for this, pretty simple. I just drill a hole and then zap around it with a jigsaw easy enough to do and then again use a little deburring tool or a, a straight sharp edge just to knock any swarf off that is stuck to the plastic. Now to keep the well in place you can probably make out those little bolt heads down there. Uh, just zap through the um, PVC and then a bolt on the outside. Now I have gone with the 316 stainless steel marine grade bolts. The reason being is the water in aquaponic systems tends to get acidic over time and even the lesser grade stainless steel will corrode a bit. So that's why I've gone with these guys here. I mean, they'll last forever. I can recycle them and use them in many different builds. That's pretty much all it for the stilling well. It's a pretty basic little build. And as I said, if you have got a uh, flatter top, you can go with something like one of these buckets. I've used square buckets in my previous builds and they work fine. So before we look at the rest of the build, just thought I'd cover pipe sizing. I personally like to run a 50 mil or two inch line through the fish tank and then down through the settler because I have roughly 1500 litres an hour or 400 gallons an hour passing through there just under gravity. Now one reason I like to oversize a bit is that it's much easier to restrict the flow by popping adapters on the pipe in there than trying to enlarge holes. It means you have to pull all the fittings out, uh, drill the new hole, and that can be quite a pain when you've got fish in the system. So to begin with, we'll start with the pipework going into and out of the filter, and I'll just explain how they all went in. We'll 
we suppose we should probably start in the fish tank. Hello fishies. Down the bottom of the um, solids lifting outlet, I have a drain fitting that collects all the solids in the water, brings them up to the top along this 50 mil pressure pipe, out through the side of the tank through a uni seal, and then into a section of pipe work that I've made up custom for this filter here. Can't give you pipe lengths, but I can point out a few handy fittings you can knock together. I haven't uh, glued on the top fitting onto this bit of pipe work because I may want to take that off and work on the system. So what I've done is I've just wrapped some Teflon tape on there, pushed the fitting on, drilled a hole in there and run down a 316 stainless steel screw just to keep it in place. From there we have a couple of 45 degree 2 inch fittings or 50 mil fittings that have been glued together with a section of pipe in the center. The reason it's in a sweeping bend is if it comes out at a 90 degrees, uh, it does uh, retard the flow of the water somewhat. I do think it is a good idea to glue everything from here on down or screw it. Another section of pipe work into a coupling that is screwed into a valve, Teflon tape to make it watertight. And then out the other side, another sweeping bend that is glued on that side and that side. And then it is pushed through a hole in the side wall of the drum, as I mentioned before, below the level of your stilling well. Now, one little pointer I can give you when working with these sections of pipe, uh, do remember that they push through a fair way into the fittings themselves. So do take that into account when you are measuring your pipe uh, to glue them into these fittings. Otherwise, you know, if you're measuring just that gap between there and there and you don't allow for enough, uh, once you put the glue on, it tends to lubricate it a bit and can actually push down a lot tighter and you may end up with a section of pipe that is a little bit too short. So yeah, just a little bit of a pointer. Make sure you measure how deep the pipe will fit inside the fitting and allow for that when you make your cut on your pipe section. Now I like to use uni seals in my builds, as most of you folks who follow me know. They just work out a heck of a lot cheaper than something like this. This is a tank outlet or a bulkhead fitting. Uh, the fitting itself costs around about $35 here in Australia and then you add the other threaded fittings you require to go with it and you're looking at $42, over $42 just for one unit. Now you need two for your separator and you need another one for your fish tank. So that brings it up to over $130 just for these ones, the two inch ones. And then when you add in the other little fittings that you may want bulkheads for, it can get rather expensive. Now um, these little two inch ones by themselves Three of them will set you back under $25 uh, if you buy from me. And yes, a disclaimer, I do sell these guys, but I also do think they work fantastically. Uh, if you do want to suss out my prices and that sort of thing, there'll be a link to my shop in the description below, as well as up there in the card section. But that's enough spruiking. Now drilling these holes for uni seals, just a quick pointer, get a really good quality um, saw, hole saw, not one of those flimsy spring steel hole saws, get a proper one and make sure you cut a very accurate hole and you'll find that because these drums are over three millimeters thick, uh, these uni seals will seal on them really nicely. Just pull the lid off to give you a look on the inside. Down there, the pipe runs through the wall and goes into another glued section of twin 45s. Now these two fittings are glued, but it is not glued onto the pipe there and the stand pipe that comes up inside the stilling well is not glued either. So I can disassemble all these parts for cleaning if I choose to do so. Now over here, a 50 mil or two inch pressure pipe that goes out through a uni seal again. Uh, this one was only pushed in a little way to begin with, but I decided to push it in further because I've made up this little weir fitting, just this thing here that I'm playing around with. I actually ran through a bit of an explanation of this little weir fitting in the last clip on the radial flow settler, if you want to check that out. And I will be posting a clip in the future showing this all set up. So if you want to catch that one, just click on that little subscribe button down there and then pound on the bell icon. And hopefully YouTube will send you a notification once it's uploaded to the channel. But back to this jobby. And as the water exits the settler, it comes down this pipe into a makeshift bio slash fines filter. And from there, the clean water goes into the sump, picked up by the pump and is sent out to the different components in the system again. Down the bottom there, I have a funky little drain fitting that has been made up from a floor drain flange and a 40 millimeter to 25 mil or an inch and a half to inch reducer coupling. And inside that I've glued some pipe onto a 90 degree elbow and glued some pipe on the other side. In the base of the flange I've added a couple of 316 stainless steel bolts and they'll prevent the drain from suctioning to the floor of the settler. And then I have a little rubber cuff and a couple of 316 stainless steel hose clamps. 
So the reason I'm using the rubber cuff to connect the drain fitting to the outlet there is I want it to act as a bit of a spring. Uh, the reason being is I've made the drain attachment sit a little bit taller than the exit hole on the outside of the settler and that cuff will help push it down onto the base just creating a better drag when I connect the pump to it and want to remove the solids out to the patch. Now just quickly with the height of the hole here what I've allowed for is enough height so I can connect my pump when it comes time to clean out the system. As I mentioned, that little fitting is pressed down to the base. I whack on my hose here, open the valve, turn on the pump, and that draws a load of solids out from the bottom. Give the solids a bit of a stir, of course, and it takes them out to, um, I've got some garden beds down the back and a lime tree that I like to feed up with it. Now I could just plug a hose in there and let it drain out to the lawn or the garden beds down the back via gravity, but you won't have as much um, suction pulling those solids out from the base of the settler itself. Another thing you can do is have this set up a little bit higher and have this coming out with a 90 degree into a bucket. And then you can just um, yeah take that bucket to wherever you want to use the waste around the yard or maybe pop it into a mineralization tank. Uh, the reason I like the pump, it's just that efficient at removing all the solids that I, I just think it's the way to go. Plus, you're not flushing a lot of fresh water in here, trying to suspend the solids again, as you would if you're under gravity, trying to get it out there. It's just something I like to do. You don't need to follow that if you don't want to. So that's pretty much all it for the drain plumbing. Something I do have on the other side here is a section of pipe that you can probably see going down into the water itself towards the base. It's running through a 25 mil or one inch uni seal through the wall there into a valve and then down into the sump tank itself. Now, what this does is it creates a bit of a uh, bridge siphon, if you will, and I can remove the water all the way down to the end of that pipe there, which means I'm only cleaning out probably around about 40 to 60 litres, maybe, in the base of this with the solids to get them out of the system. Otherwise, if I didn't have that bleed offline, a lot of the solids will be mixed with the water and you basically need to dump almost the whole lot, uh, especially if you have to stir them up around on the base to get them out of the system. So it's just a nice little hack that I put in here. I've had something similar in a previous one, uh, but because the filter was set up higher, I could have it coming out directly through the wall at the level I wanted to empty it and into the sump tank. So just this little bridge siphon idea just makes it a lot easier to remove the bulk of it. So we'll just pop this lid back on the separator and we'll grab the fish food and give the guys a little bit of a treat. See if they're hungry. I think they're hungry. Uh, just quickly, if you are new to aquaponics and you do want to suss out a few other videos, I do have a rather large library in a playlist. If you want to check it out, there'll be a little link popping up at the end of the video here and also down in the description. So I would suggest you suss that out if you want to learn more about setting up your own backyard aquaponics system. I would like to thank you all for coming along and uh, checking out the clips and it'd be fantastic if you could share them around with your family and friends and different social groups if you think it might help a few other folks out. Before I go, I really do need to thank those awesome folks supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also through our own Farm Your Own Yard members website where folks get bonus content. Uh, you can suss out links to them um, down in the description and there'll also be a little card up here at the end. But I will pretty much well leave it there, folks. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own aquaponics is booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a tough one.